So we're not even going to wait on the Bulldogs. We're just going straight in with the Kings gambit. How do you tell your football club they're ugly? Oh, right. Well, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? And you don't know till you know. So you can argue when they knew. You can argue whether Beveridge knew it uh, prior to draft trade period last year or did he know it? Did he know it round three? Did he know pre-season? Did he know when they'd come back that some had dropped off, didn't quite have the, the same fire as, as season's gone? I think it, there are two ways to see it without saying it. One's, one's at selection. So you, you can go past players quickly. So you leave players out, which he's made conscious decisions to do regarding McRae and, and, and Daniels and these guys. And you can go young. You can play guys that everyone says, really, is he, is he absolutely ready? And, and, and it, it, on the surface, it looks weird. Some of the selections, you start questioning, are, are they really going to play this guy for 20 weeks when they're a potential top four team? They know, but we don't. We haven't seen it yet. And then the roles. You can play players in roles that you go, well, why wouldn't they look at Norton at an halfback? Just for two or three weeks. Have a look. They've got enough tools up for because they know. They just know that they've got to get other players to stand up in other areas. So selection's one way of, of, of saying, hey, we're ugly, but we're not telling anyone we're ugly. And there's the silence. There's just the silence. I haven't heard Luke Beveridge at all this year nominate or offer his thoughts on what this season could become. I haven't heard him say, hey, I think we're right there. I think we've got to find one or two players or – we're working on this method or we're working on, we're working on that. Um, I haven't heard a meet Bain say too much either after last year saying they were a top four list. So are they still there? Has he, has he said to us, no, they're no longer a top four list and why? Why is that the case? Why is that happening so quick? And if you're not a top four list, what are you wasting this year for in the off season? If, if you've made that uh, decision and then you have the silence of just those internal lies where you walk past each other in the corridor and you know – you just know that you can't say it. You can't say we're ugly. we just got to play this Ducks and Drakes game of, you know, Beveridge sees sees Marcus Bonson and Pelly and they both sort of know, but no one sort of says, hey, uh, what are we doing here? You know, we got – so I, I, we talked about this years ago. you got to know where you're at in footy. And as soon as, know. as soon as you don't know where you're at, you are in all sorts. If you get it wrong, if you're late – to the party, you you cost your club years. Now, right now, Jones is 33, Libba's 31, Johannesson's 31, Lobb's 31, Trelaw's 31, and they got Bont at 28. So it's on a knife's edge because Jones is their only major defender. Let, let's be fair, let's be fair, and they they fell into him really because every other club passed. So if they wait, if they're resetting and it's another two three years, is he still there? Like, you, you want to try and give Bont one last opportunity, S similar to a Nathan Fife type. Like, they're at, we know they're not going to be the same product they are right now, but they're still going to be going to be bloody handy. So it's okay to say you're ugly in, in, in April, but there's not a lot you can do about it. So this is this is the, the difficult and delicate situation they have now, is where to this year, what are you actually trying to find out, what are you actually trying to do? So it does... It felt to me like so all the work that was done in the off season was about preparing them to be successful now. Is that fair? They removed all the obstacles, worked out what the absolute optimum was in the systems and the personnel, make all of that necessary change to clear the way. We're on the clock with Bontempelli to clear the way to be successful now. So if what you're saying is right, it's a hard conversation to tell your club it's ugly mm. when we, we all spend all our time agreeing that Right, this is the best way to be successful now. So how how have they done that though? Like this is the discussion, you know. You you, you don't purge players; you acquire players. So they go they go and get Rory Lobb, you know. And, and what does that offer? What does that bring? Does that bring a real difference to your footy club? Um, because you've got a ruckman, you've got an all Australian ruckman. Like what what are you trying to? Is are you bring him in as a second ruck to play forward when you've got you know you've got Jamar and you know you've got Darcy coming. You know they're on the they're on the clock uh, as father sons or, or academy selections, so I, there's a bit of confusion for me, and and, and I, it's not for us to to assess this and judge this. We we just look at performance, but their bottom half a dozen players are going to hurt them at the pointy end, and they know that, and they're hoping. I reckon they hope this year that those guys had improved enough to not be 
bottom six players to make sure that their bottom six becomes a bottom three and you run that risk and that's okay because everyone has that risk. So I, I guess we, we are sitting back and just waiting to see where to from here. It's, it's a brave call to, to then be at the end of this season – be allowing English to leave, be allowing Smith to leave. And what, what do you do with Dale? What do you do with McRae? What do you do with Daniels? So there's a lot of decisions to be made and how you handle that for such a sustained period. We're talking 20 weeks. It's a long time. So the, the two parts of that, the first is, is it rectifiable within season in your eyes? Could they become a good side in season? They can't become a premier in my opinion. Yep. And if you're not becoming a a genuine, you know, preliminary final team. What are you, what are you becoming? And then if they weren't, if they aren't all aligned on your assessment, say that's the coach's assessment, but the decision makers are going, no, we've built this list to a point where it should be contending. How does that play out across the course of a season? Well, the coach goes, doesn't he? If the coach is the only one on an island thinking they're not good enough, or if, even if he's right, he's wrong. Because if you don't think you can get this group to the promised land, they won't get there. So you might as well be gone. You might as well leave. And, and if they think they're good enough and the coach is underperforming, well, then they're in, they've are they got to run the business. They've got to move him on. I think he's a wonderful coach. I do. I'm, I'm a massive beverage fan and I think he's a different coach. And Not everyone gets his, his genius, his brilliance from the outside. He's won a premiership. He came in at the perfect time. The contested ball game of McCartney set them up for someone to come in and bring some flair, some creativity. They come in and they played some beautiful football, yet brutal at the same time. So the ball movement matched the contest stuff. They win a flag. And then it's probably they've meandered a little bit since, had another opportunity at a premiership, made a grand final. That, that's outstanding. But right now it's tipped over. And, and I, maybe it is time. Maybe it is time. Maybe Beveridge knows it's time. But I think that he's we, – we, we shy away from this. Go to another club. Like, what would Beveridge do with the, the platform that's at Brisbane? Let's just say Chris Fagan finished at the end of this year and they're looking for a new coach. They're not. But if they, they've got the contest game spot on. You bring a bit of genius in, a bit of new motivational sort of tools and levers and, um, and the, this guy has got the stamps already. He's got tattoos. So let's – you know, they, they're the sort of things we're talking about. So I don't think he's lost to footy by any stretch. Um, because he offers something different, but right now it looks like it looks like it, it's straining. Do you agree? Yes, yes. That, that's what it looked like on Friday night. Yeah. So I, I would imagine it is a difficult thing to keep everybody tight together when you're he's searching for a new mix and players become expendable on that front. Now you can have the view on whether that's right or wrong, but. That's that's got to be a tough beat in the locker room. Mm. I, th no, that no, it, it would. It's a high wire to walk. I think to hold everybody together in the search of a new mix while you're missing out. You know, and you're going. So we're leaving him out. And and selections always. We've spoken about this before with beverage. It's always been a curiosity. Mm. So it feels quite intense right now. And that's what the last quarter looked like. Now it's for them to rectify immediately. Like teams rectified stuff on the weekend. Um, but it's all eyes to them. It's all eyes to them Thursday night against St Kilda and then over in the West against Fremantle because the, the high end tests are a little down the track and we saw against Melbourne that they're a way off that. I think they've got to put so, a few things right now. Yeah. So when you're comparing them to re other teams rectifying stuff, you're, talk you're talking about the contenders. So you're, you're talking about Brisbane. Yeah. Well, they, I'm talking about Essendon, for instance. Right. So they, they got exposed ruthlessly on a problem and they went to work and they fixed it for that game. So I think they need to fix a few things in their game for Thursday. All you can we'll do... We'll get to Essendon, but their, their problems are still there. Th that's right. I heard, I've heard crunch time, you guys went through all their draft picks. They're, they're high yes, dra they're, yeah. they're, they're, they haven't gone anywhere. None of that's resolved. No. But Adelaide, resolve their midfield mix, got something different. So all you can do is make your adjustments for the here and the now. You can't change your list in season and you can't rectify the mistakes of the past. But they, I would expect them over the next two weeks. We're about you wouldn't want to limp away like they did on Friday night. Well, so what are you going to do tactically on the field? Because there are levers to pull at the Bulldogs. But it, when, what are you prepared to do? So tactics and what take response you so are you going far. to get? Yeah, yeah. So this is the challenge. But all they can do for the next two weeks is rectify their issues for that are right now. 
But you've I just can't. told them they're ugly, Jared. <laughs> yes. I, I, I can't tell you I love you and you're ugly and and I'm and I'm attracted to you, we but you're two ugly. Good dates. You can't do that. Right. Like you, you're living a lie. So tactically, you can do whatever you want, but unless you've got absolute buy-in and absolute unity, it frays. And we chatted with Lee Montagna last night. He's lived this, right? And and he t- he's, he's spoke about hey, the, the the message that the coach tells you. We're re- resetting, not rebuilding. Let's not use rebuilding. We're 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 off the pace, and the just the collective sigh of a football club. Gee, we're actually no good. Not that we're no good. We're not. We're not contending. So tell Marcus Ponsipelli, who's in, again in in ripping form, that we're not contending. Yeah, uh, that he's the one I've been thinking about because I always thought the Collingwood thing was about what's Scott Pendlebury thinking, and then all of a sudden they'll right back in it. Yeah. Is what. What's occurring to so Marcus they do that? privately now? Can they do that at the end of the from year? From season to season? Well, that's the question, isn't I it? I would think so. Yeah. But, that, but then you've got but to make you, big you've decisions. you illustrated the old – the, the, the young – a lot of what they need is actually on their list. That's where I think they're an interesting – So get this wrong last year at trade and draft period. Can't get it wrong this year. Mm. You, have two, you have two years, two gap years. You're not going back to uni, yeah. Jared. I'm telling you. I wouldn't be rushing to sell to uh, sign Tim English in the next six weeks. I just let the next six weeks play out. Mm. The King's Gambit. How do you tell your footy club you're ugly? The best bits. We should give West Coast a nod. They won a game. Give them a nod. We'll give Bastion for two years. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. I texted the coach last night, and he texts back. We used to just have this saying about. I'll clean it up a little bit about winners' drinks. Winners' drinks taste better. Than, than other drinks, when you when you share a winner's beer, and you cheers, there's a little there's a little something in the look, your eyes, you know, bang, hey, well done. Yep. They had that experience last night. They haven't had that for a long time, and, and it's strained everyone at the footy club. It has stressed everyone from management to coaching to players, and, and I said it, I say it all the time. But if your top four or five players lead like they should, like the structure says. Um, on the pay scale and, and internally. You're, you're, a, you're a leader for a reason. Kelly and Yo played unbelievably. And McGovern and, and Barris have, have, have tried to do this for weeks. Um, and it all come together yesterday when the kid goes crazy for 10 minutes. And the kid does what he does. But he does it because he's not having to do it by himself. He's, he's just another, another uh, cog. And I, I thought they were terrific. Gee, they were good. Yo, Yo's back to his brutal best. And people say, oh, you've got to trade this bloke, you've got to trade that bloke. Imagine if you didn't have those guys, the hole you've been. We're seeing that. We'll get to Hawthorne later, but we're seeing that with Hawthorne. When you haven't got them, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. So it was just a, a great relief for a, a strong footy club that are, are well aware of where they're at. Yeah, and they had a weakened opponent come into their terrain and you just had to take that. How big an issue well, is I f- Hawthorne? I found that, that press conference really... Bizarre. Well, we're talking about training now. We're talking about players not doing everything, not dotting every I and crossing every T. Oh, I thought that was a given at Hawthorne. I, I didn't think that was a conversation we needed to have. Did you Did you think that was something, a, a, a bit of a revelation that maybe all isn't as it should be in terms of absolute professionalism? The club, the, the bottomed out by design to get these young kids into an elite environment to charge, and he's talking about those sorts of things. Yeah, Did maybe maybe that's the maybe that's the roasting. Maybe that's the part that you can go to work on. So really, talk to your players in those moments. Yeah, uh, and we're going to straighten this up. If you're not going to perform here, we're going to go and do it there. Yeah, well they they just looked they just looked dispirited on the weekend. They didn't have they didn't have the energy levels and yeah. the buy in that. Which was weird coming out year. of the second half of the Collingwood game where they should have been on a high. Yeah. I, I, haven't, um, I haven't bought in like others to this Hawthorne rebuild. It's a full bottom out job and you have to make every post a winner and every decision you make, you have to nail. Um, I don't know if they've yet got their torchbearer. Who's the guy at the front? Who is it? I thought it was James Sicily. I saw James Sicily on the weekend. I've seen him a couple of weeks in a row now. Not be as convincing in, in, in marking contests as he has 
always been, with double double fisted spoils, with half a turtleneck. That's not him. He's normally big at the footy, up high, one clunk, intercept mark, let's go, let's play. And he's as good a ball user as you'll see out of the back half. Mitchell threw him forward. And I'm thinking, is he throwing him forward because he needs a score? Or is he throwing him forward because he, he, he doesn't want him doing that down back? And, and that's harsh on, on James because he's, been, he's a top liner. We love the way he plays. They've lost their edge in the middle. They, they'd be lost in the midfield without Warple. And they, they, he's, a bit like, he's a bit of the, uh, the lost dog, Warple, a little bit. They, they've, they've treated him pretty severely over the last couple of years to get him back in the form. And he's, back, he's playing some pretty good footy. But where are the rest? What's happened to John Newcomb? Like, where's that, where's that breakaway, tackle-breaking, um, step out of stoppage, hey, draw two or three to, 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 to defend him, get the hands out and go? They've lost that. And it can't, it can't just be Will Day and Jaff. It just can't be. And, and don't tell me about Luke Bruce because it, Luke Bruce has not got 100 games left in him. I don't know what he's got. He's, I'm not going to put a number on it, but he hasn't got 100 left in him. Um, so where is it? And until they find their torchbearer, I don't know if – I don't – I think they'll meander. So their challenges are, are obvious for all to see. The, the, the rebuild coach is just starting to feel the heat now. Just starting to feel the heat. couple jumping off who are his biggest fans – um, so I, I feel this is this is this is when the challenge starts for the football club, not just the coach, not just the players, to rally around. This is where they've you got to hear from the from the hierarchy now. Hey, hey he's in, we're good here. We know where we're going. We're we're right. We're right. Get out and just calm the farm a little bit, because for the first time I saw the coach look really stressed. Mm. So what happens? So if you can only address what happens in the short term. Um, they've got North Melbourne, so that one of the winless sides away from a draw will get on the board and at least feel a bit better about it all next Monday. Is that it sort of becomes, um, it's probably not a fair thing to say, but it becomes more important for Hawthorne than it does for North, doesn't it? Oh, I don't think it's going to matter in the long run who wins this game this week. You know, we won't be looking back and say who won round six, you know. 2024, I don't think. I mean, they're both they're both rebuilding. You, I would expect North Melbourne to be a year or so ahead of ahead of Hawthorne. It doesn't mean they win. Yep. It just means they've probably had the opportunity to acquire one or two more high end picks. And and clearly, North Melbourne were given some luxuries by the AFL with some concessions that Hawthorne are going to probably need, and West Coast are going to probably need. So I, I, you know, I understand that people are people are reluctant and disappointed when the AFL hand out these things, but geez, they're needed, aren't they? How long do you want them to be down the bottom for? Yeah. Oh, well, you and I come at that from opposite sides, mm. but. Um, they, they needed Hawthorne, don't they? Well, uh, this is, these, this is all of Hawthorne's making, isn't it? Mm. But it's, it's always of the club's making. It's never a time where it's not the club's making. Mm. Usually everybody who, is involved in those decisions is long gone by the time hope is uh, hope is afforded, I think. So uh, I think if you make a sequence of bad decisions, that's yours to get out of. I would have a different system. I, like I would, you know, I would have mid-season trading and the like that actually yeah. allowed you to fast track making your list actively better rather than having handouts. So yeah, we're on opposite so sides of that. Can That's I give okay. you, can I, yeah, of course it's okay. I'll give, can I give you one that I think that they're going to have to seriously think about? And, and it's, it's an, it's an uncomfortable one because we, we all, we all love the player that he is, but do they have to look at, at trading um, someone like a Mitch Lewis, who's 25, 26 years of age, because is he going to, you know, how far away is this next opportunity? And you know, you hate saying that, and I hate that clubs are in this position. But if you don't, if you don't give them concessions, that's the decisions that they are left to make. And we don't, we don't, we don't want that. So you force the club to trade out someone that they love to get high end draft picks for the next wave. I just think it's, it's just a difficult position to be in without any assistance. All right, big issue for Hawthorne. Let's do the curiosity, shall we? It was it that that. You were there on the boundary for it, Carlton and Adelaide. It was one of those games that could only happen at Marvel. <laughs> I, there's a subset of games through the years. is it, The roof has to be closed. Track has to be fast, even though it was a bit slippery. And, and 
it pings around, lead changes, you think it's over and then it's not. And then Michael Voss has said that what they got on the swings, they lost on the roundabouts. How did all that happen? From the moment where you nominated, keep an eye on the wingers, Acres, oh. and goes down and kicks a goal, you go, oh, right, they're going to be, their learned skill in the close ones is about to uh, impose itself again. Yeah. And then they lost from the position where they put the gap in it. Yeah. So, so again, this is a bit similar to the Fremantle discussion. If you're going to live in the close ones, you've got to be good in the two-minute drill. And they got it wrong. They got a, they got a, a few things wrong for a club that's had this experience a lot recently. Like Kerno goes behind the ball. He's not going by. So they, they sent Keane with him. And Kerno goes, oh, hang on. Am I now defending Keane or am I the loose man? Oh, I'll just defend Keane. Well, that, they don't want Charlie Kerno at centre-half back. They want him as the loose man. Yep. So he had to draw someone else back and be the free. So with with 90 seconds to go on the clock, he could have taken the intercept mark that would have shut the game down. But instead, he's having to fight for his life to defend. He's actually spoiling Keane. Well, that's just – that's ridiculous. He should be coming in third man uh, if he has to spoil his balls, but but you want him to be marking that ball. That's the that's the design of him going behind the ball. So they got that wrong. Uh, and and that'll be a, that'll be a correction they make for next time. Their their clearance game is still a little bit off. They they're having trouble getting the ball from inside to out, and and I just I just don't think they're at the violence levels of last year at clearance. And and I sometimes you you don't know it till you see it. Remember last year I was talking about hey they're bashing teams. You don't want to play Carlton. If you're going to play Carlton, bring your best because they they're, they're pumbling teams. Well, they've lost that, and they're winning on ball movement alone. And Walsh comes back in and picks up where he left off. Unbelievable start to 2024 for, for Sam. But they, they have got to get harder and tougher in tight before they become the, the, the model that we keep all saying of one, two, or three on your seedings. They're a long way from the finished product, but they've got 20 weeks. They've got plenty of time. But it's one they shouldn't have dropped. And Adelaide? So that the change change alters fortune, and that's what they did. Is we've spoken about all their money invested in Saligo and Rankin and Rochelle, and for good portions on Saturday they had two of their buzz players in the middle, and they got a big dividend from it. Well, if if Crouch and Laird and, and often Dawson are vanilla, well they got a little bit of sorbet on the weekend, Jared. A little bit of lemon sorbet with uh, Isaac Rankin going. So Lego's going to be a star of our competition. Just give him time and give him the keys. He, he's a priority in there. So ahead of even the captain, put him in there. And, and Rankin went in for twenty centre bounces. I've been talking about Isaac Rankin for a month. If you're going to go and get that player. And you know the ball starting in the middle of the ground. You put your best players, your magic makers, where the footy is. There's no point having him in the forward pocket when the ball's likely to get there 20% of the time from centre bounce. Yep. Put him where the ball is and let him do his thing. He, he was unbelievable. But what, what it did more than anything is when you start in the middle, and Jeremy Cameron often goes in for centre bounces. He's not in there as a clearance player. He's in there because the moment the ball goes in general play, he's up against a midfielder. That's a, that's a win already. Because he's going to be able to take them forward, um, knowing that they're not defensively diligent, knowing that even if you do go one on one with them, you're going to be able to outmark them. You're too smart for them. You're too clever for them. So Isaac Rankin was matched against Hewitt, going to beat him all the time. Paddy Cripps, going to beat him as a forward versus defender all the time. So you, you get luxuries post clearance. Then all of a sudden, Isaac, he starts getting his hands on the footy. He's, he had 23 touches. If you get 23 or more touches out of Isaac Rankin, you're in most games. Yep. So then, then Rochelle says, hey, look what Isaac's doing. Jeez, I better pull my finger out. I've got to come to the party here. They bring on Sam Berry from, uh, from the sub, and, and he goes crazy. He has nine touches, sets up four scores, and wins them the game. Like, it's the perfect result for Matty Nix to walk in and say, right, if we, our system's fine. Our system's fine, and these guys, as a new mix, come in and did the job. What are you senior blokes doing? Come on, let's go again. And you get to challenge them. Laird should never go back in the middle. He should be a flanker. The plays midfield minutes, but maybe from a flank. Yep. Um, and great to see Tex back. I mean, Tex has such an impact, doesn't he, on this on this team? So whilst Tex is there and in good form, they, they've got to get on a run now. They've got to capitalise. They've got to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Showed a lot of character to get that win. And yeah. particularly because 
on the road has been their short suit, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they'd won one of their previous nine at Marvel. So it was it was a good one to get. All right. And get me, uh, answer the open question on St Kilda, would you? So Ross Lyon posed it half empty or half full. <laughs> so we, we, we want to ride the Saints. Do we want to ride the Saints? I don't know. If they put themselves the to two and three, which is not a hopeless position, mm. but the most interesting part is, and Ross watches the Saints closer than anyone, was he'd said the midfield had been battling. And then when the game looked lost, he made his changes in the midfield, either to alter the game or maybe just to say to a few. And so he went with Marshall, Steele, Battle, and Garcia. <laughs> so yeah. he said to the midfielders who aren't getting it done, yeah. out. Get out. A little bit of Sinclair. We're putting will... a defender in. We're putting a debutant in. Yeah. Steele, you're a champion. You can stay in there. Yep. The rest, um, get out. Well, I just I don't know how good they are as a, as a, as a, as a squad, but they get the most out of them. I, it's a pretty good effort, really. A pretty good effort to run them to a point on the road, um, but you don't get any spoils for that. You don't get any credibility for that, really. You walk away with zero points. But I, I think they're learning all the time about this squad. I, I'm I'm a fan. You, you know my thoughts on on this group. Um, they just got to get. They just got to get more from those guys who are dour. The dour mids. I, I watch. I watch their mids closely, and I think they're a little bit like Adelaide. Make some change. Throw guys in there that you that you got to close your eyes on occasion in the contest. But as soon as the ball's out of contest, you can you can go, you can run and gun. Um, yeah, you know, I'm a big Messiah Wanganui Miller fan. I'd throw him in. He's a dancer. He's a bit like Isaac Rankin. I want him kicking the ball inside fifty. I don't want him kicking out of the back line. I want him kicking inside fifty. So there's um. There's some work to do there, but we're, we're going to stick fat, Jerry. Yeah. We're not yeah. jumping off yet. I think if you, if I read their form line, you go, okay, so they just failed to run down Pride of Jenny and they Pride of Jenny. couldn't quite get there over. They were competitive with Mr. Brightside, but the trouble was when they went back to the weaker race, they got beaten by Essendon in a game that they felt they coughed up themselves. So that's why they're the wrong side of the ledger. But big scalp on Thursday night. Just go and beat the Bulldogs. There You've you got go. vulnerable prey in front of you, but the Bulldogs are going to live that cycle where teams respond in this cycle. To be, go and take care of business there. Yeah, well, you can't let that happen. If you're the Saints, you just can't. You've got to be more professional than yeah. that. Matt Crouch was suspended for a week and Zach Butters was waved through. The debate is for New Vision Clinics. New Vision Clinics, keyhole laser vision, next generation technology. What say you, David King? I think you know my stance. It's pretty clear and pretty obvious. I think the Matt Crouch one week is is just way unders. I played junior football with a guy called Ross Napoli, who's now in a wheelchair, and 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 I, I won't accept that. Oh yeah, there's a potential to cause injury. Yeah, we'll give him a week. The the injury is so severe, to to bumping the top of the head. I think it's worth more than a week. I just feel like we're still unders. We've, we've regressed back to the standards of 2020 in the space of five weeks. We, we went so hard at Sam Pell Pepper for not getting a lot wrong. He got four weeks. Webster, a, a normal four week cost was eight weeks. And I thought, here we are. Thank you. We are taking this more than seriously. We're stamping it out. And as soon as it's a player of significant um, waiting in our game, that, that they, they have the potential to win the brown load. Zach Butters can win the brown load this year. And he's a major player at Port Adelaide and he's a star factor player of our competition. As soon as he involves one of those sorts of players, I think we start making excuses. This is the Trent Cotchen, Dylan Shield, Mark II. Cotchen balls up and, and, and in effect, it's like cleaning out the player in the contest. You clean them out and you, and you go after the ball as well. But you know you're cleaning them out. You, you know that you're going to make severe contact at that speed. And we were told, that if that example happened again, there would be a sanction imposed on that player. There isn't. And I, and I understand that that it's line ball, but we were told line ball was going to fall the wrong side of the coin for those guys. It was going, it was going to be the other side of the coin to what it had been. It's not the case. So what part of Butters do you think he's culpable for? So the ruling is that, Hands out, eyes down, contesting the ball, makes contact with the ball. 
and I think it's actually marginal, whatever high contact he makes, he makes contact to the body rather than high. What, what part of the line has he him the wrong his, side of it? Are you, you saying he doesn't hit his head? I think there's glancing contact with his head and the real contact is with his body. Glancing contact? Yep. What's, what does that mean? Um, you, I see boxing matches that have glancing contact yeah. and people hit the canvas. So I asked the question if in those exact circumstances he'd ended up knocking out Banfield, how mm. would it have been seen? That would have been substantial contact to the head. And then I think, yeah, well, are we holding to, was he okay because he was contesting the ball or not? I think that's a harder one. Yeah. That, that, that lives right in the gray area. So again, we're at the outcome again. We're back to this outcome discussion. No, well, I think there's a difference between making, he didn't make substantial contact with the head. So that's Three the reality, steps out. not the outcome. This is my point, right? This is the David Mackay um, incident a few years ago with Hunter Clark where they come spearing in at a rate of knots that I can't guarantee or I can't absolutely say I know how this is going to arrive yep. at, the, at the footy. Butters is the same. Three steps out. He's, he's just going at breakneck speed to get his hands on the ball, to try and win the ball, I think, in, in, in the initial stages. But he knows he's coming in with a clean-out motion. And I think the onus is on him to miss the head. To avoid contact with it, because that's what the game says. The game says to Bailey, you can come in exposed because we, 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 the game's protecting you, mate. And then all of a sudden it's not protecting him because he gets a left paw on the on the footy. Mate, bad luck. You're going to wear whatever comes. And he does make contact with the head. And you can, you can wash it off as glancing or, or, or you can say, no, it's not substantial enough. And he didn't quite kill him, so we're letting him get off. This, this will happen more and more now. So all you really have to do now is is have your hands down. Have your hands down. I've, I've never heard that before. It's a new one for me. But so so the, the concussion side of it takes another step back. The pressure index. You could take an unprecedented step and put an unbeaten team in the pressure index. The well, Giants? Yes. We're putting the Giants in there. You know why we're putting the Giants in there? Because... I want to see the Giants. They get, they got a tough run coming. I think they've had a pretty favourable draw in the first few weeks, and that that's great. Bank your wins when you can. Any wins a good win. Um, but without Sam Taylor now, it elevate, elevates lesser defenders to prime roles. Now Buckley's a beauty, and we we love the way he plays. But he's been second banana. So let's just see him as a first banana, and let's see Connor Iden as a, who has been a third banana that is all Australian calibre, and they want to tell us what what he is. Let's see him as the second banana now and see if you can hold up for a couple of weeks without your your first pick, you know, all-Australian superstar fullback. I, I can't wait to see him. And, and without Cornelio in there as well, let's have a look. Let's have a look and see whether, you know, this list that we, we all laud and love, uh, see whether it can just roll on unimpacted. So they've got Carlton and the Lions as their next couple where the absentees will be felt and then the Swans after that. So we're about to get a, a great indication of... Where they sit. So they, their defence, right, their defensive 50, because they play so free uh, running and high octane footy, this tsunami offence, they leave their defenders on an island. They trust them to get the job done and they leave them in one-on-ones, if not 6v5, favouring the opposition forwards. So they're prepared to back them. So are they going to still play that way? Because when we saw the Saints go at them in the, in the last quarter, so they normally concede every fifth, Inside 50 to the opposition becomes a goal. So one in five. The last 13 inside 50s for St Kilda, six goals. Yes. So that what are we? Which one are we looking at? And how do you cover and cope with that? So that's that's what I'm I'm genuinely looking forward to seeing Iden and Buckley in main roles. What did you think of the coaching at the injury timeout? So it was such an interesting set of circuits. Yeah. The first was the Sam Taylor incident looked as bad as any that we've seen, just the manner and the ambulance staff that were out there. My first reaction was that Kingsley was thinking, I've got to distract these players from the fear that was associated with their mate. Get them over, get them over here so that we can talk about something else, mm. and whether there's an acknowledgement of what was going on and then just trying to reset them. But then you get the shot of Ross Lyon and he must have been thinking, all right, Better go out and do some coaching then. If they're going to coach, I better coach. It's sort of an, it's an odd moment. It is. It's one of these strange things that pops up through the course of the AFL season. But I, I don't know if it's fair that just because you coach from the boundary, you get an advantage that the guy in the coach's box doesn't get. That where you sit shouldn't have an impact on 
your advantage is to talk to the group. So if that was at the MCG and it took five minutes instead of 10 minutes, Ross Lyon wouldn't have got to his troops in time. And then he's got to get back to the box again. So he would have lost five minutes of real time football. So I don't know if you should be able to talk to your group as a, as a timeout on the boundary. I don't know if we can allow that advantage because it'll happen again. And instead of just milling in the middle of the ground, the players will come to the, to the oh, that, coach side. They'll be side. super smart about it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's an advantage that one coach gets because he coaches at ground level. You know, I'm, I'm not sure we need that. I think if I was in footy ops at the AFL today, I'd be going, no, we can't, we can't have that. Yeah. It's not part of our sport. No. So in those moments, you can't come and gather around the coach on the boundary. You just have to stay out on the field. They all gather. They all congregate. That's long been a custom when there's a, but you can't come and, uh, and have a coaching address against the boundary. I reckon, I think everyone would go, yeah, yeah, of course you can't do that. You can see Ross. Oh, I'm not having this. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to get down there as well. So he was probably lucky they were at the venue they were. Yeah. So I, that can be done on a pen stroke. No one had really yeah. thought of it before. No. Hey, we can't have that. So no, we're we just can. not accepting that again. Because it, what sort of length of time will you allow? Yeah. So someone rolls their ankle and we're waiting for a stretcher over to the, over to the yeah, coach. Yeah. Well, why wouldn't you? Yeah. So that'll, it'll change. It'll happen far more regularly now that it's an advantage to be at boundary than it is to be up. So the Mason Wood one we talked about yeah. uh, from earlier in the year, was that Collingwood? It Who'd was. They play? Yeah. And McRae's down on so the bench. So McRae's down there. So if yep. McRae called them over and had three minutes with his troops that Ross Lyon doesn't get, is it, are we happy with that? No. I don't no. think we are. I think that's easily easily ruled out today. So uh, they had a great performance, didn't they? They really did. It was a, To it was, pull that out at the end. Oh. And Fremantle are so awkward to play against. You know when you can see teams learn on the run? We showed some vision last night of Butters and Rosie just locking onto their opponents late. Now, they blew it against Melbourne when they didn't lock on. Yep. They let Melbourne get forward of them, Petrarca and Neil Bullen and all those guys getting forward. They, they, they'd clearly been told, games in the balance, do your job. So they just hit the lead and then they locked on. It was, it was awesome. Darcy Byrne-Jones was really good late. Their defenders took the right positioning. Everything was in sync. It makes it, you've got to reevaluate Port Adelaide. I feel yeah. on the back of that. And then the go-ahead goal is Butters in the middle, Rosie with a beautiful pickup, and Horn Francis taking the mark. So the, the, the flip side is Fremantle giving those luxuries to Rosie yeah. to allow him to get forward. Um, so there's so many moments in that last three minutes that could have gone either way and, and, and the result hinges on it and Port, uh, Port come up trumps. just want to re-prosecute the case on Fremantle as if you were going to manufacture tight games that come down to the end is you want to be you want to be really sharp at that phase of the game. Yeah, and but they're playing some pretty good footy so yeah. I, I've been hard on I'm hard on Fremantle because I don't love the way they play. Not, low turnover returns. Like something like 22 points and 26 points the last couple of weeks. Like you, AFL average is close to 50. You, you, you're not going to win finals with that turnover profile. I don't care what anyone says. So, I'm not saying it's a fake brand. I'm not. I'm just saying that until they can force the opposition into more turnover or higher turnover factor, they, they'll be a, a, they won't be a contender for me. But they, I'll just have a look at their draw, Jared. And I know you love to do this, and I'm surprised you haven't already. I think they'll probably win their next four or five, maybe oh, even six. They're, they're going to go the, on a run. They're going to go on a run. They got the Eagles this week, which you think they'd be favourites. Dogs at they play in Perth. They play Richmond at the MCG. You'd think they'd win that. Then they got Sydney in Perth. And they come to Marvel to take on the Saints. That'll be their biggest challenge in that block. So get on a run, Dockers, and then we'll talk about you differently. All right. Excellent text messages coming through. For <laughs> AFL footy ops more likely thinking crypto.com timeout. Very nice. That's good. That is good. And James, none of us would be surprised if Jared held lectures at home on Sunday morning on yeah. Farlap and Bradman. <laughs> If the answer was no. If your kids did the idea, uh, Australian citizenship test, would they pass? I think they would. Because I think Bradman's on there, isn't he? Well, at one point he was. Oh, they, see, these bumped. are things we need to has know. I don't know. It just alarmed me when Ross said his young players didn't know who Farlap was. Yeah. yeah that's a bit of a gap in the culture. PFI. Mate. I feel like the Brisbane Lions have won themselves a piece of preliminary final integrity here. Yeah, that was uh, – we're hard on fags. We're hard on Fags because we all think that he's probably had the best squad for a couple of years. Um, but to see him coach the way he did, we've given him enormous credit. You know, the use of Cameron 
further from the from goal. He, he operated 30 to 40 from goal and worked back to the goal square rather than out of the goal square. He's a different player when he's doing that. Ten score involvements, his best return for a while. And it forced May, May and Lever to be diligent and straight line in their defence off um, Hipwood and Danaher. So when you get that and you, you don't allow them to couple up, you don't allow one to support the other, then you can get them. And that's what they did. They picked them apart. But the, the, for the very first time in a long time, I saw a plan of a, the skinny side wingman who normally stands at the back of clearance by himself and then causes the concertina after that. He went to Petrarca. So it was Berry, it was Archie, and it was Fletcher. And they went to Petrarca and they tracked him back. They didn't let him get forward and get his um, forward half football where he's so damaging. Something like 49 or 50 of his 56 score involvements for the year have been as a forward half player or in the forward half. Mm. So you have to have someone assigned to him. And they did it with a wingman. So well done, great coaching. Um, good to see that they can have that flexibility because they've been a pretty rigid team, the Lions, over the last couple of years. Big, big, big tick for the coach. And and I think they made a a, a seismic shift in their 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 outcomes for 2024. I feel like these seedings are now provisional for a few weeks because there's some tasty clashes coming, which is going to help us shake out an order. No other boys, Jerry. But please. you've got to have you've got to put four in for now. Be more courageous, boys. All right. Who are you going at four? Uh, sticking with Geelong. Nothing to see here. Move on. Tick the box on the weekend. Yeah, you put them in last week, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Who, I'm putting who, who, the Brisbane Lions in. Oh, welcome yep. Brisbane. Yep. So they come in for the first time. I've got a bit of a playoff, a play-in game going with Brisbane and Geelong this coming week. So Brisbane go in for now. Okay. And uh, the play and the winner of that will definitely be in the seeds. Okay. Three. Don't make any statements about winning six in a row or anything? Not yet. Okay. I'm just going to hold fire there. I've slid Carlton to three. Yeah. I just think there's a couple going a little bit better. They've got to get their, their brutality back. Yeah, so Carlton were one for me until they lost. Now they've lost. They can lose a couple of places. Oh, they dropped two? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a big slide. You're going to punish them a little bit for that? Wow. They can sit at three. Gee, we're naughty corner for the, Carlton. The, yeah, the stub toe was the one that really got me. If not wow. for the stub toe, they might I have like gone you. to two. You drop them so hard. Uh, two. Yeah, you're a loyal kind of guy, too. <laughs> two for me, Port Adelaide. Yeah, you, same for me. Love that win. Yeah. Love the win. Love what they're doing in the midfield. Everyone loves their midfield. But I love their damage. They get the footy. They make you bleed now. So I put them in last week, and I'm happy to slide them up. Up there's, from there's three? Up from four to four. two. Yep. Gee whiz, you fall in and out of love very quickly. I do, but it's got this game against Collingwood at the MCG. Oh, hello. So, and Collingwood haven't featured yet for obvious reasons. That would be Collingwood's way in, wouldn't it? And we've, uh, bo no. we've both got the it, Giants at one. I'm not sure Collingwood would be in my top six or seven, to be honest. Uh, Giants at one, yeah. But let's be honest, they haven't really played anyone of substance. No, just so yet. they're about to play Carlton, Brisbane, and Sydney in their next there three. There we go. I'll tell you who's going to come in in a, in a hurry. I'm thinking Fremantle, if they get on a bit of a run, I think they can win their next six. They'll be in your seeds in a month's time. I can't it's see it, but not that hard to get into your seeds. <laughs> you can get in and out really quickly. <laughs>